Okay, Mitch, here we go. Hey, thank you all for coming. Now for my next trick, I'll do a double somersault. So, it's that you guys are the, um, are the literati of Western Sydney University, right? You're intelligent, you drink coffee and whiskey, and you argue about creative things, right? And you've come along to support your colleagues in an exciting concept, and I want you to argue, drink coffee and, and throw whiskey at each other, Russian style, after the concert, right? Tell them which pieces you liked and which pieces you hated. We have a really exciting sort of lineup of people. In one sense, it's almost like a heaven and hell framing it, right? We have Emma um, going into the dark recesses of Edward and Alan Poe's um, mind and in the work Raven. And we go more to the heavenly aspirations with Chanel at the end with a beautifully cra crafted rock song, indie rock song, which is, uh, I heard her uh, just going through the paces before and it was really passionate and emotional. And Emma's, just as Emma's is really dark and experimental. So pick, take your pick, you know, heaven or hell, right? As we go into the middle of this, we have a, a series of um, beautifully crafted pieces um, scouting across sort of um, some beautifully, it's almost simply deceptive writing, but actually beautifully crafted. A work doesn't have to be complex to be exciting. And a complex work's not necessarily exciting. It can be really bad if it's not constructed. But what you have here is some beautifully constructed works like Sai. Dyson Kahn's, where you know it, the, just the, um, the growth of harmonic richness through into a sudden sustained moment is really beautiful. We go through with Kathy Nguyen's um, voice uh, with cinnamon. In a sense, it's sweet, but and it's in a sense it's quite deceptive. This piece in its simplicity, but actually the way that it, it builds the underlying rhythms and vocals and beautifully curved sort of melodic shapes is actually makes a very convincing composition. And then, of course, right in the middle, we have Biwa, who I understand is from a uh, Kurdish background, and it's a beautiful sensitivity to the changes of, of sound that you can get, not only in the nuance and the way that you play the violin, but also, and that sort of translates into the way that the interval colours on the harmony work in a really beautifully sort of sophisticated um, amalgam of timbre and colour. So, and then framing this, we have... Um, so two of the best improvisations from the, the semester. We have um, Biwa leading a group where, uh, you're ex again, you're exploring the sort of jazz influence, but with taking the idea of, of sort of making the tones change across a piece in, um, in the stage two improvisation. And then, of course, the beginning, we have Simon Gooden, who I think is an amazing sort of jazz pianist and a very, um, very good composer with a sort of amalgam of jazz and um, really well thought out composition that could take him a long way. And he's leading a sort of an experimental jazz ensemble with Emma and Sage and Pam, which to me sounded pretty sort of exciting sort of jazz stuff in terms of the locking of the harmonies and the, uh, with the wind instruments. So with no ado, we'll welcome our very own jazz leader, Simon Gooden to the stage and his band. This is improv. Have you ever heard the rain burn? the lightning strikes it's too late too late for anything but hope prayers might get you through to the end of the night but all your dreams going up in smoke
Don't stand so close Don't burn so bright Heaven seems so close tonight Well, there's nothing I can do to change it Even if I wanted to But this craziness keeps running through It's like stepping on a landmine The time of hitting zero There's still before the cyclone hits Oh, my days are numbered, coming ready or not. I pray to the Virgin, I should it come to this. I wake up on the morn to find the monsters of the night are gone Do I watch my back around the corner? Here they come, they're gonna stay, 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 they're gonna stay. They're talking about monsters. Talking about monsters. Monsters Right, some I've never heard Pam play before. Well, that was an amazing solo, right? 
And so um, it's sort of like a cross between um, Leonard Cohen and Bebop, I think, perhaps, yes. So um, we now move to our next piece by Emma. Yep. This is a very strong piece. We'd like to welcome to the drums one of our alumni, uh, Holly Harrison, who, uh, when I first met her, apparently I was told she plays uh, punk drums at crotchet equals 160, but she assured me it's always crotchet equals 220. So we have that live um, sort of energy coming into Emma's piece. It's a very sophisticated piece called Raven. Uh, we explore this really uh, interesting sort of colours from the different instruments and builds it up to a really massive and sort of a very impressive and strong climax. I think Emma's got a, a great future in composition if she wishes to pursue it. So if we welcome to the stage now, okay, Emma, and of course um, Simon, uh, otherwise known as Leonard Cohen, Holly. to the darkness, hearing, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dreamed before. Gaunt, 
the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting. And his eyes have all the seeming. My soul floating on the floor shall be lifted never more. Never more. Never Thank you very much, guys. I'm sort of rather nervous after that. It's caught the malevolence of Poe's writing. I should um, mention that Holly has come to international distinction since winning the Appledom Young Composers Prize in Holland and a sort of very prestigious jury, including uh, uh, Louis Anderson, who's one of the top minimalist composers in Europe. And she's won so many international prizes, I've actually lost count now. But she uh, added a fantastic sort of drumming, sort of performance, viscerality, which goes into a composition to that piece. And it's a very well-structured piece. So a composition really works if, you, uh, if the holistic sum of the parts really add up and, and flow together as a whole. And um, Emma, of course, does that very well in her piece. And the next piece by Cy Dyson Khan, Sunflower Fields, does something similar. What, but his uh, au revoir of sounds is harmony. And it just grows through very small motive changes melodically and then into a sudden held richness. It's a very, really beautifully constructed piano piece. So Cy Dyson Khan.
Thank you very much, Si. You can see there's a beautiful sort of harmonic language underpinning that that's all size. And it's it sort of explored and through and then builds and then holds. And then you really feel almost in that last quarter summary of his own color language. Um, coming up now, we have a um, continuing with sort of that sort of uh, underlying sort of jazz harmony um, is Biwa Koshnow's piece. And this time, ag again, it's, um, he takes that sort of um, jazz harmonic language with the upper colorations of ninths, elevenths, and thirteenths, but into sort of very carefully voiced um, uh, chords on jazz guitar. But this time, of course, Biwa being a violinist, um, it's, it's taken into a lyric line, and it's developed with a sort of um, almost Kurdish nuance for um, timbre graduations in the violin. So, No Friends But the Mountains by Biwa. Thank you. 
very sensitive and talented duo there with Biwa and Dylan. So you can see from the last piece taking over those sort of idea of kara and then those very beautifully idiomatic uh, chords on the jazz guitar that just linger and you can enjoy. And then Biwa's playing is beautiful and when you look at that on the page you would think okay it's just notes but actually there's a presence in playing almost a whispered humanness and changing of the line. That sensitivity to timbre is beautifully played there by Biwa. Coming through into the next piece by Kathy Nguyen called Cinnamon. What it's quite, it's often people say to me, oh, but I have to write a really complex piece in order to get an HD. No. Um, in fact, writing, um, it often very, um, you can take a very simple and beautiful ideas and actually through the careful arrangement of these and shaping and shifting of these ideas, you make a beautiful piece. And this, is, this Kathy Nguyen's piece is a bit like this. It's a deceptively simple idea, but the way it shifts under sort of syncopated underlying rhythms and a beautifully shaped vocal line in the same way that Beaver is using melody, it, it builds through across these beautiful pump chords under it in a beautifully sort of um, balanced form. So you can use very simple ideas, but uh, very intelligently crafted to create a stunning piece of work. So Kathy Nguyen, Cinnamon. Hi everyone. I just want to start off by saying um, thank you, Bruce, for thinking um, to think that this song is somewhat good. <laughs> I wasn't um, I wasn't sober when I wrote this, so it probably really ex explains a lot. control ya but I cannot move on without you by my side you were everything that I've wanted from a guy no I There is 
nothing that I can see But I cannot deny That our fate has lied You're gonna teach me something that I don't know No, I won't let go You should let me Lay down with me now, fill me with kisses I'll be your lady forever Lay down with me now, give me your own boy You and I together Poor Rudy seen as nothing but a friend. To be honest, in the end, it was my undoing with my lack of attempts. Damn, I wish I wasn't such a wimp. These girls keep passing me by as I try from the far side, barely seen. Out of sight, out of mind, but these girls circle mine like a track meet. Guess that's why when I chase, it ends in defeat. Lay down with me now, fill me with kisses. I'll be your Performing at Creativity Unlimited coming up. So, um, and that, so that's a beautifully um, written song, and it has real meaning and passion, and very gritty. We come through into Chanel's work too, and again, this is a type of love song too, uh, of heavenly dimensions. Uh, again, a as with um, Kathy's work, you can take very um, simple choral material, but actually beautifully construct the whole so it glows and grows and allow and becomes a vehicle for the passion of what, what the person is trying to uh, express. And so this is a beautifully shaped and imaginative overall sort of, um, and it sort of thrusts forward both lyrically and in terms of its harmonic um, changes. And you get the, under it, you sort of get this sort of harmonic underpinning that's almost hymn-like in a sort of way that Charles Ives used to use hymns to signify his Christian faith within a piece, but actually thrown into a chaotic whole that worked in, in a beautiful sort of passionate way. And I think this is what Chanel has done here. It has it, it glows in an Ivesian sort of way, but with a sort of passion of heaven. So Chanel, um, daughter of the king. I 
the sins I once had known. I am clothed, I am robed, I am walking in your glory. I am strong, I am loved, I am your welcome testimony of the love, of the light, of the goodness in this world. I am, I am. It's so So that's uh, a different sort of love song with a sort of heavenly ambrosia and the best sort of soul traditions coming out of the states of statements of faith. Um, it's sort of, uh, it's beautiful use of the voice there, you know, going in and out of the roughness to, to, to get the quality of the sound and going up into the head voice. Uh, um, and then this sort of creating these beautiful still moments in the song. What um, I th it's a real privilege each year to hear you guys um, exp uh, bear out your creativity and 
uh, on stage, and I, I find it always really, I'm amazed at the imagination of you guys. I think at Western Sydney University, we have an amazing creative series of brains here interacting with each other, and uh, it's always a privilege for you to be your creativity in these concerts. Thank you very much. So coming up for the last one, we have Biwa back to stage, and I should say this is like the Biwa um, Hoshnau sort of jazz group, right? So we have uh, off the stage two, so this was, I thought, some of the best improvisation that went on. So we have uh, Sammy Bedwin, Jason Weston, and Harriet Archbold working with the leader, Biwa. So a big thanks to the Biwa Koshnau Quartet. Nice, uh, explosive way to go out. I'm always amazed, you know, like you teach composition and then just to actually see the physical reality of these things coming to being is really exciting. Often these mild-mannered people that come up to me ask me a quiet question and 
in class, they get up on stage and they explode. And I'm like, whoa, I'm going to be politer to them. So I would like you to give a big thank you to um, Mitchell Hart for uh, providing the sound <laughs> with the great professional plum that he always does. And Noel Burgess for supporting him. And, um, um, and a big thank you mostly to the way that you guys have um, laid out this creativity as a concert, a really exciting concert. Thank you.